Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord Jesus a hand clap and tell the Lord thank you. God is good. Amen. He's a merciful God, and he's here to be with us in our time of distress, in our time of grief, in our time of bereavement. Amen. As you remain standing, except the media family, we're going to have a prayer of comfort. My name is Jeffrey Hoard. I'm the pastor here at the Prince of Peace Temple Church of God in Christ, and we certainly welcome you, family. We're praying your strength, praying that God will comfort and give you peace, that you will have love one for the other at this very difficult time. Elder Aaron Hoard is going to come and pray a prayer of comfort. Amen. I ask that you continue to stand in the family. Uh, may be seated. Let's all bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, first of all, we thank you that this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for you know all things. We thank you because of, because of you that we live, move, and have our being. Father, at this time, Lord, we pray for the family. We pray for the friends of precious Angela D. Marshall, Lord. We just ask you to comfort as you know how to, O oh God. We might not know how to comfort, but you know how to comfort us, O oh God. Lord, O oh God, you are the God of peace. You are the God of strength. You are the God of comfort, Lord. So we ask on you today, O oh God, to bring us your peace today, the peace that passes all understanding, O oh God. Lord, you said in your word that you would comfort us, O oh God, when we had need. So we're asking for that comfort today, O oh God. We ask you to bless this service today. We ask you to bless this celebration of life today, O oh God. Comfort our souls. Comfort our minds, O oh God. We thank you for your glory. We thank you. We honor you. We praise you. We bless your name. Lord, we ask you this today in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. As you remain standing just for a moment, we'll have our scripture reading, Old Testament scripture. Deacon Bryant and the New Testament scripture, Deacon Huckabee. Uh, I'm reading the 23rd Psalms, a song of David. And it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they shall comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. going to read to you from 1st Thessalonians 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as other which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which are asleep and Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, 
comfort one another with these words. I have read to you from 1 Thessalonians. On behalf of the deacon board of the Prince of Peace Temple, we would like to offer all sincere and, you know, gratitude to Mario and his brothers and all the rest of the family. We would like to offer all sympathy to them. And we're here for them. Amen. You may be seated. Thank God for you. Thank God for this wonderful family. Our prayers are with you. And at times like this, sometimes we just don't even know what to say. But we know that God will comfort and strengthen you. We're going to have a musical selection. Uh, a Mario is going to come and offer a selection. Let's say amen. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from me. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for
Good afternoon, family and friends. Um, we are so grateful to God to serve on this morning as we come to remember and celebrate the life of dear, precious Angela Marshall. We want you to know that God is a God who can comfort our hearts and minds when no one else can. We are so thankful to have Brother Amario here as a member of the Prince of Peace Temple. He's an outstanding young man, and we appreciate him so much. And we want you to know that we love you all, and we are certainly here for you in this time. From the Prince of Peace Temple, Church of God in Christ, March 22nd, 2024, to our dear brother, Amario Marshall and family, the Prince of Peace Temple family shares your sadness in the home going of your beloved mother, grandmother, and sister, Angela D. Marshall. We pray for the Lord's comforting presence with you in this difficult time, and we offer the reassuring word of God that tells us that for believers in Jesus Christ, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, and we believe that Angela is in the loving arms of Jesus right now. God, in his infinite wisdom, blesses us with treasured memories of a lifetime shared with our departed loved ones. These remembered moments in time reflect the abiding love that will live on in our hearts as we move forward in healing, continuing in our kingdom purpose until we also transition from labor to reward. We pray that reflecting on those memories of your time with Angela will bring you peace and joy. Please know that the Prince of Peace Temple family loves you. We're holding you up in prayer and we are at your service to be of ongoing help and support in any way that we can. Yours in Christian love and service, Pastor Jeffrey D. Horde and the Prince of Peace Temple family. Amen. Reflecting on the life of God's precious daughter, Angela D. Marshall. Angela D. Marshall was born on October 10th, 1961 in Buffalo, New York to the late Geraldine H. Marshall and the late Ellis R. Marshall. She was the eighth child out of nine siblings, big family. She graduated from Kensington High School in Buffalo, New York. Although a majority of Angela's life journey took place in Buffalo, she also lived in Compton, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Auburn Hills, Michigan. Angela was a free spirit who throughout her life enjoyed cooking, listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Prince, watching her favorite shows on television, and attending various gatherings with family members, and babysitting her beloved grandchildren. Angela transitioned from this side of glory on January 20th, 2024, after suffering complications from a series of massive strokes that she had experienced within the previous year. We give glory to God that she is no longer suffering. She is no longer in pain and she is at peace. Angela is preceded in death by her brothers Ellis M. Marshall Sr. and Stanley L. Marshall Sr. and one sister, Gloria J. Mayo. Angela leaves behind to cherish her memories, her siblings Glenn Marshall of Buffalo, New York, Brian Marshall of Pontiac, Michigan, 
Her sisters, Diane Cam of Long Beach, California, Linda Meeks of Pasadena, California, and Thelma Benson of Cheektowaga, New York. Her sons, her beloved and precious sons, Anthony Marshall, Eric Harris, Terrence Scrivens, Michael Scrivens, Brandon Marshall Rivers, and Amario Marshall, her grandchildren, Anaya Marshall, Alana Harris, and Eric Harris II, and a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. And at this time, the family would like to share sentiments on behalf of Angela. Let me go. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little but not for too long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey that we all must take, and each of us must go alone. It's all a part of the master plan, just a step on the road to home. So when you're lonely and sick at heart, go to the friends that we know. Laugh at all the things we used to do. Miss me, but please let me go.
This song is dedicated to people like me, <laughs> those that struggle with insecurities, acceptance, and even self-esteem. You've never felt good enough. You never felt pretty enough. But imagine God whispering in your ear, letting you know that everything that has happened is now. Touching song. Imagine me being all right after all we've been through. Praise God. But it can be. It can be. Amen. We can be all right. At this time, we're going to open the floor, open the mic for those of you who would like to have some words to say, words of condolences, words of comfort, words to encourage this family. Uh, we have a mic set here. And if you'd like to come, just say some words, maybe a story that you have about Angela, just something that will encourage. This is your time. God bless you. Angie was my, uh, she was my big sister, because I'm the youngest of the nine, and um, well, we spent a lot, but we only a year and a week apart, you know, she was the protecting me from me, protecting her at times. It's going to be funny coming home and not protecting her not being there, you know. Um, she stayed at the house that my mom, that we grew up in. Just hurts. Uh-huh. She's been part of uh -huh. I'm gonna need me to break up like this for her. Yeah, this one hurts. Um, we've been through a lot. I've been there, you know, for all my nephews. I've been there for um, to stay in touch with everything, but. Her not being it was always Angie O'Brien. I mean, Thelma knew that. Um, practically all of our lives. And I, I had to come say something, even though it's coming out broken up. Everybody know how I felt about her, you know, um, and felt about all her, her, especially her sons. You know, I was uncle to all of them. And, and um, it just hurts that she's not going to be here anymore. Miss her so much. I mean, I would call her. That's my sister Angie from Blackfoot Drive. You know, and um, we always we, we talked when when people didn't think we talked. 
Okay, when did nobody want to have nothing to do with her? I came to town, she was the first person I came to see. I ain't care about that. I ain't nothing to do with them. I'm your brother no matter what. Okay, and that's the way I felt about her. Um, I'm gonna miss her. I already miss her. Um, I, that's all. Yeah, I think that's it. This one. You know this history is out. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm number six out of nine. Sometimes we would go by numbers. <laughs> you know, Jean was number one, of course. You know, Diane said she was, you know, one and a half because she refused to be two. <laughs> and uh, it, it's just, it's just tough, you know. I mean, I've been trying to wrap my head around this. And <sighs> when I look at her, she's so beautiful. She's always been so beautiful. And just to know that I can't just like call her or hear her voice. That's going to be so hard. It's just out of the nine of us, she's number one. You know, you just never think about it growing up that when you have siblings or close cousins, and, you know, I mean, our family was big and we, we, um, <laughs> our family was big and we always did things together. And it's just tough. It's just tough knowing that she's not going to be there. It's just tough. I want to thank the boys. You guys have done wonderful. I mean, I could not have asked for anything more. I'm so proud of you all. And I just want you to know that Auntie is still here for you. Call me whenever. I'm, I'm here. Hi, family and friends. Uh, I'm Glenn. I'm number seven out of nine. Um, but one, one thing I, I wanted to uh, do was, uh, you know, talk about, you know, how great Aunt Angela has been for the family. She gave us, uh, she gave us these boys, man. That, uh, you know, we always used to prefer to refer to them as the boys, you know. They become men, you know. They're, they, you know, they, they're, they're all men today, you know. And um, you know, the, the beauty thing about it is that uh, she was always there for her men, for her young boys and her men. She was always there, and uh, and you know what? You, you guys have always been there for her too. You never let her down, and I want I want to thank you for that. You never let your mother down stood up for her, no matter what. And I want to thank you for that. And one, one more thing I want to say bes besides that is that you stood up for her, right? And I want you to stand up now. Would you all stand up? <sighs> Young men, you stood up for your mom. Now I want you to stand up for yourselves, for each other. And I want you to turn to each other and thank each other for doing such a great job. Go ahead, thank each other, because you did a great job. Yeah. Yeah. You stood up for your mother. You did this on your own. You got a lot of, you got four aunts, you got four uncles. Come on, get it around. Get over there to Eric, Mario. Yeah, there you go, there you go. That's right, you did it. You did it. That's how we was raised. That's how we're going to be for each other. That's what it's going to be. I want you guys to know that. This is how it's going to be. This is it from now on. You got, 
you, you have four aunts and four uncles. You still got how many aunts, uncles? Yep. Yeah. From the, from the from, from the Marshall family, but you also got them from uh you know the Harrises. Yes, the Harrises. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to thank Raynard for being here. Thank you, brother. I love you, man. It's a good moment here. This is what it's all about. We watched these boys grow up, man. They never was able, they never had an opportunity to do this because we always was there shielding them or we were making it happen for them. But you know one thing I can say about these young men? I've never seen, we've never let these guys go around with their pants sagging, being disrespectful in the public. Um, they've never been disrespectful to their mother or any of any members of their family, including themselves. So can we just give them a round of applause? Thank you, gentlemen. How's everybody doing? Hopefully well enough. For those that don't know, my name is Eric Harris. I'm Angie's second oldest son. My father was Joe Harris, and um, without those two, None of this would have happened. Um, I just want to say that what I know I feel and remember and hold on to is that my mother taught us, showed us, gave us unconditional, undying love that would break through whatever barrier needed in order to make sure you knew it. Uh, it never needed to be proven, never needed to be maintained, never needed to be upheld. It was pure, so you always knew it. And I think that's a gift that I, if you know her, you have it, and you're lucky to have it because everybody doesn't know this kind of love. Uh, we also know how to give this kind of love, and it's the only kind of love we know how to give. And with that, I feel like that's something that's timeless. That's energy that can't die. It can only transition. And what I choose to do, and I hope all of you do as well, is allow that love to transition into you because that's how we keep her alive. Your memory will never go anywhere. We'll only get stronger. And just kind of keep the things that you know you gain from the memory, from the experience, from the impression left. Keep those things with you because when we see it in each other, it, it's once again how we keep the reality of her being here still just not in the physical. The moment the things you leave here that are not physical also go away, that's when you actually die, I feel, in the terms that we think of. So let's just do our best to hold it together for each other so that doesn't happen. My father was gone when I was seven months old, but my family on my father's side made sure I always knew what was going on with him and who he was. And his memory still is here to this day. I felt the presence my whole life because of that. So I'm speaking from experience. And if anybody's tr struggled with this, just take my words and trust me. You'll get stronger at it, you'll get better at it, and uh, you'll see it through. That's all I'm gonna say. Scribblings, and uh, I thank you, Father, for this time. Um, I thank you for this time with Angela and the family. Lord, um, me and Angela um, loved each other. Lord, I just thank you for a wonderful family, the Marshall family. 
Lord, I can't do it without you, Father, but I thank you for the Marshall family. I thank you for the time with Angela. I thank you, Lord, for always just drawing me closer, closer to you. But she will be missed. Um, I love her so much. I love her family. Good evening, everybody. How you doing? God bless. Good to see everybody out here. My mom, man, my mom was uh, very rare. She brought out a light in everybody she touched, and she made sure everybody knew that they were special. Everybody had, or she had a way with everybody, everybody's kids, everybody that she was around to bring out the best in them, to make sure that they had a good time, they put a smile on their face, make sure that whatever you were going through, you were gonna be able to get through, especially if we have the strength to come together and get through it together. Regardless of whatever's going on, whatever you're going through, you, she made sure that she would be there for you. Even if she was going through her own tough times. With us, we're all boys and men, so she had to be strong enough to let us know what was going on so that we could be strong enough to take care of each other. It falls down the line from my oldest brother, Tony, to my second oldest, Eric, down to me, down to Mike, even down to Mario. And when it comes to all of this, it wouldn't even be possible if it wasn't for her showing the love that she showed, not only to us, but the family that we have that showed us the love back that she gave to everyone. And I just want to say thank everybody for coming out. Thank everybody for showing the love that they showed us because we wouldn't be the people that we are if we didn't have the family around us to keep us in line and to keep us on the right track and to keep us from doing those things that we could have been doing. Probably some of us have already done those things and came back to be better people. And that's why we're here today, to make sure we get through another tough time. But at the same time, even when it's not a tough time, we should be coming together. And I just wanna thank everybody for keeping everyone in, or all of us in their hearts and in their prayers. And I love everybody here. Thank y'all, and I love y'all. Thank you. words you all have shared today. I feel like I've gotten to know Angela better just from your comments. What a loving, kind, fun-loving woman. God bless you all. Amen. There's going to be a musical selection. I'm going to saw the best in me when everyone else 
surround me could only see the worst in me. He saw the best in me. When everyone else around me could only see the worst in me. in me when everyone else around me could only see the worst in me oh he saw the best in her when everyone else around her could only see the worst in her
that's the case for all of us. He saw the best in us. And he loves us. We're talking about God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this time of remembrance, remembering Angela Marshall. God, I ask that you will comfort this family and give them your peace. You know how to do it. You know what they need. God, speak to their hearts and let them be comforted today by your presence. I ask that you would receive Angela to yourself and touch these young men, these family members, siblings, all who are touched by her life. God, give them the touch of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to try to be brief today. I do honor the Lord who's first in my life and to this bereaved family. I want you to know that we love you and we care about you. Don't know you as well as we know a Mario, but just know that you're connected to him and to us and we love you. We're praying for you and God will give you strength and comfort. There's something about death, death of a loved one, such a close loved one as your mom. It hurts. It's difficult and I don't know why God made us this way that we can feel so tough and so bad, praise God, when these things happen. But I want you to know that God knows what you're going through. He's there to comfort and hold you up. And my prayer is that God will continue uh, to bless you and to lead you in the way that your mom will be proud of. Amen. May God be your strength and may God comfort you in this time of remembering Angela. God desires to settle you with peace. Amen. Peace is a wonderful thing. And I hope you have it today. Peace with one another. I'm so glad to see you all hug and, and just support one another. How refreshing that is. Many times in death situations, it brings out the worst in families and there's bickering and fighting and all kind of things. I didn't see that today at all. God bless you, young men. Keep that up. Love one another. Be there for each other. That's what God gave us family for, to be there for each other. We come together today to remember and to celebrate the life of a great person, a beautiful free-spirited and fun-loving woman, Angela D. Marshall. She leaves a legacy of love, yes, having given birth to and raised these sons, and she did a great job. She did a wonderful job. Angela loved her family, and to me, that proves that she is great, yes. Now, how can we go on? How can we move forward? How can we get past this? when a great person is lo no longer present physically with us. I enjoyed your words, Eric. Amen. She's with you. She's still with you. Not physically, but she's with you in spirit and in the memories that she made with you all. So I encourage families often when they're in situations like this, remember the good times. Remember the smiles. Remember the meals. Remember the picnics. Remember the fun. Remember those wonderful things. And in that way, Angela will always be with you. Yeah, nobody could take that away. I want to read a poem for us today as we think about and remember Angela. This poem I read many years ago, and I thought that it was fitting for today. And it's entitled, When Great Trees Fall. Maybe you've heard it before. It's by Maya Angelou. And it says, when great trees fall, rocks on distant hills shudder. Lions hunker down in tall grasses, and even elephants lumber after safety. When great trees fall in forests, small things recoil into silence, their senses eroded by fear. When great souls die, the air around us becomes light, rare, sterile. We breathe briefly. Our eyes briefly see with a hurtful clarity. 
our memory suddenly sharpened, examines, gnaws on kind words unsaid, promised walks never taken. Great souls die, and our reality, bound to them, takes leave of us. Our souls, dependent on their nurture, now shrink, wizened. Our minds, formed and informed by their radiance, fall away. We are not so much maddened as reduced to the unutterable ignorance of dark, cold caves. And when great souls die, after a period, peace blooms slowly and always irregularly. Spaces fill with a kind of soothing electronic vibration, our senses restored, never to be the same, whisper to us, they existed. They existed. We can be, be and be better, for they existed. Thank God that Angela existed. Today, we remember Angela Marshall, and we are glad that she existed. One of her sons, her youngest, Amario, is a great blessing to us here at this church, our congregation, and it's in part because Angela D. Marshall existed. Amario, we thank God for you, and we thank God that you're here because of her. I thank God this young man he would come, wandered over here to our church and just kind of fit in and blended in with us. His mom allowed him to come over here and be with us. Even he was a young child, but somehow she knew that he was doing a good thing. And uh, she trusted us enough to allow him to come and be with us. And for that, we know that Angela is a great person, a great woman. Amen. Family, how can you move forward? How can you go on when a great soul has died? I want to read a passage of scripture for you today. I'm trying to be brief. That will give you the answer that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way to go forward. I'm going to read in your hearing the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. And we're going to ask all except the family, would you stand just in honor of the word of God? John, the 14th chapter, I'm going to read verses 1 through 6, and then I'm just going to talk about it for a little bit. The Bible reads, this is Jesus speaking, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas, one of Jesus' disciples, said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. You may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word today. Our thought is Jesus is the way. In this passage of scripture, Jesus was talking to his disciples on the night before he was going to die. Jesus knew he was going to die, but his disciples didn't really know. They didn't really get it. His disciples didn't know that Jesus, their leader, their Lord, their friend, was going to lead them. Jesus loved them so much that he took the time to talk to them to prepare them for his death. And in a way, I think that Angela held on to her life for a while so that her family could be prepared for her departure. Angela had been ill for a long time. She was uh, afflicted by some strokes, and she wasn't herself, amen, but she held on for a long time, and I believe it's because she loved you guys, amen, gave you some time 
to get ready. And even though you never get ready, you never are prepared for it, I think she loved you and tried to prepare you for her departure. Jesus, in that first verse, told his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus had just finished telling them that he was going away and that they would not be able to go with them, with him. He had just told them that one of them, one of his 12 closest, was going to betray him. And then he had the gall to say to them, don't let your heart be troubled. He wanted to comfort them by telling them, in other words, stop being troubled. To go forward, family, stop being troubled. And I say, that's easy to say. And it is easier to say than to do. But this is what the Lord is saying to you. Stop being troubled. You have experienced one of the most devastating losses that anybody can experience in this world. To lose mom. Mom is special. I mean, dad has his place, but mom is something special. And I don't know if I got any witnesses here today, but when mom is gone, that hurts. That's a blow that you never recover from. But I want to encourage you today. Jesus' words say, stop being troubled. You might wonder, how, preacher, how can I stop being troubled? Well, Jesus went on to say, you believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus wants you to believe on him. And when you believe on him, he can help you to stop being troubled. My first point today is stop being troubled. And my second point is believe in Jesus. Believe doesn't just mean intellectually believe, just to say, yeah, I believe Jesus existed. No, but it's more than that. Believe really means to trust in, rely on, depend on, lean on, have faith in Jesus. That is how you can stop being troubled. Jesus assured his disciples that in my father's house, in heaven, there is a place prepared for you. Praise God. I don't know if any of you have ever been in a state in your life where you didn't have a place to live. You didn't have a place to lay your head. It's a feeling of insecurity, a feeling sometimes of embarrassment, a feeling that makes you ashamed. I don't have a place. But Jesus said, I'm telling you the truth. I'm not lying. I'm going away, but I'm going to prepare a place for you, a mansion, a beautiful place that you won't need to be ashamed. There's a place prepared for you. And Jesus said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself so that where I am, there you can be too. If you belong to Jesus and trust in him, you will go to be with Jesus in heaven when you die. I believe that God prepared a place for Angela. And Angela is in that beautiful place with the Lord now. Hallelujah. So we can go forward in life. Even when great souls die, we can stop being troubled by believing in Jesus. Allow him to comfort you. Allow him to hold you up. Allow him to nurture you and give you strength. Jesus told his disciples, you know where I'm going. I'm getting ready to die. And you know the way. And one of his disciples named Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered him and said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man can come to God the Father except through me. God the Son. My third and last point today is that Jesus is the only way to go forward if we want to head toward God. Jesus is the truth and he is everlasting life. To go forward, Jesus is the way. I'm about to close today, but I want to commend you young men for being uh, so wonderful to make your mom proud and to love her Amen. Uh, and I want to encourage you today that the Lord Jesus loves her and loves you. I heard a story 
a number of years ago. I don't know if it's a true story, but I want to tell it in your hearing, and hopefully you'll glean some comfort out of this story. There was a very rich man who had a lot of wealth, cars, houses, land, and eventually he had a son, and he loved that son very much. Sons, Angela loved her sons. Well, this rich man loved his son. He acquired much wealth, and uh, over time, he grew in interest to develop uh, like an art gallery. He, he had artworks in his home, and over the years, he purchased many very expensive pieces of artwork. And in his collection, he had some Picasso, and he had some Van Gogh, and he had some Da Vinci, and he had some of these famous painters in his collection. And as his son grew, he involved his son in the business. And eventually, his son would travel around the world and make deals to get more precious artwork to put in his father's collection. He taught his son the business, and his son helped him. But eventually, that son grew to be a man, and he was drafted into the armed services. I believe it was a Vietnam War era. And he went into the army, was served in the army, and since he was such a young, uh, strong, courageous young man, he became promoted. And he went up the ranks and eventually had a troop of men that reported to him. And one time, the, this young son and his men were in a battle, and fire broke out, and many of the men were hit, and some died, and some uh, this young man, he saved their lives, but in the process, he lost his own life. When his dad, this rich man, found out about the death of his son, he was devastated. His son meant so much to him, and he decided that he was never going to be happy again because his only son was gone. Well, after some of his men got out of the service, one of them came to the father's house. He knocked on the door, and the father came to the door, saw that he was a soldier, and he said, are you here because of my son? And he said, yes. He said, I knew your son. Your son was a great man. I just want you to know what a great job you did in raising him. And in fact, what I want to let you know is that I'm alive today because of your son. Your son lost his life in saving mine. And the father broke down in tears. And he said, thank you for letting me know that. And he said to the man, he said, I heard from your son that you had a great art collection and that you had many precious works of art. And he said, I decided that I wanted to paint a portrait of your son. And he said, I know it probably doesn't compare with all those great pieces of artwork that you have in your gallery but I wanted to give this to you. And he unwrapped it, gave it to the man. It was a painting of the man's son. And he said, this is so precious, thank you so much. He said, I'm gonna place this with the rest of my art collection and it's gonna hang on the wall. It's beautiful, thank you so much for doing it. Well, eventually this rich man died and he left some instructions for what will be done with his art collection and gave it to a company that was an auctioneer. And so they set up an auction to auction off these beautiful works of art. I guess the man thought it's no use just having it sit around in the house. Let some others benefit from this, these great, beautiful works of art. And uh, so the auctioneer sent out notice to people who would be interested. And many people came from miles away to come to this auction where they could perhaps get a chance to buy some of this beautiful artwork. And so uh, they came and they gathered in the man's house and so they began the auction. People from all over the world looking for these precious works of art that they might add to their own collections. And so the auctioneer started by saying, we're ready to begin this auction, but I've got a letter of instruction here and there is a work of art that the man who owns this art wanted to be auctioned first. And it's entitled The Sun. 
And so the, they brought out this work of art that that soldier had brought, and it was the painting of his son. And so the auctioneer said, this is the instruction that we must auction this one first. It's entitled The Son. He said, do I have any bids for The Son? And nobody said anything. They said, oh, that's ugly. That's nothing compared to what I wanted to I wanted to get a Renoir. I wanted to get a Picasso. And here you bring this son up here. He said, let's get this over with. And nobody put in a bid. And they said, well, the auctioneer said, well, maybe I'll suggest $100 for this work of art. Do I hear 100? Nobody said anything. Finally, the butler who lived in the house with the man and his son said, well, I don't have $100, but will you accept a bid of $10? And the auctioneer said, all right, we have a bid of $10. Is there anyone else? Can I hear 20? There was just grumbling, complaining. Ah, oh, we don't want this. Hurry up. Let's get through this. We want to see the real art. So the auctioneer said, all right, $10 going once, going twice, sold to the man there in the back. The butler came up and got that piece of artwork and took it back to his seat. And he said, I knew this son. He grew up in this house, and I loved him, and I loved this man. And so I thank you all for giving me the opportunity to purchase this for $10. And then the people who were grumbling, complaining, said, all right, we got that over with. Let's go. We want to see the good art now. So the auctioneer opened an envelope, and he read. He said, that ends our auction for today. And they said, oh, what are you talking about? We want to see the good art. We came all the way here from all over the world. We want to bid on this good artwork. And the auctioneer said, the man left some instructions in this envelope, and I have to follow them. That's my job. And he said that all of this artwork is beautiful, but he said that whoever takes the sun gets everything. Whoever takes the sun gets all the rest of the artwork, gets my home, my cars, all my possessions goes to the one that will take the sun. What I want to let you know today, that God the Father had a son, and his name is Jesus. And he's saying to each one of you today that whoever takes my son gets everything. Whatever you need, God's got it for you, Amario. Brothers, if you take the sun, you get everything. You get peace. You get love. You get joy. You get everlasting life. I encourage you, take the sun. Jesus loves you. You may not know much about him, but he's the son of God. And he came down here from where he was in heaven and he put on a human body to become one of us. Why would he do that? It wasn't just out of curiosity, but he came so that he could die. That sounds strange, sounds weird, but he came to give up his life for each one of us. Why did he do that? Why would he need to do it? Because each of us have done something that was wrong, amen. We've done something that got us out of God's good graces, and it's called sin. But when Jesus came, he came to took the punishment due to each one of us for our sin. I don't know if you ever heard this before. Some of you are church people, and I don't know if you ever heard it like this before. But Jesus came here to take a beating that we deserved. I don't know. Have you ever taken a beating for a Mario? <laughs> took one for Mike. <laughs> well, praise God. Amen. Well, you're a good man. <laughs> Most of us don't take a beating for somebody else. Somebody else deserves it. That's, that's on them. But Jesus loved us so much that he said, I'm going to come and take the punishment that each of us deserve. And in a way, he paid for our sin. He paid the punishment that we deserve. And now, if we take the son, if we will receive him by faith, if you will accept him as your savior, God said, I'm going to save you. I'm going to give you everlasting life. I'm going to give you everything because you took the forgiveness for your sin 
that I offer through my son. God bless you today. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you today for this great family who is coming to celebrate this great woman, Angela D. Marshall. And oh God, I ask today that if they don't know you, that they heard enough today to investigate, to, to look for you. Lord, I found you one day and I thank you. You came into my heart. You forgave all my sin, took away all my guilt, all the wrong that I have ever done. Jesus paid for it. And I thank you for that. And now I have everything because I have you. I ask that you would bless these people today with that same experience that they would come to know you and your great love, your grace, your mercy, your kindness. Lord, you aren't standing there with a stick ready to beat us. You aren't standing there with a bull whip, but Lord, you're standing with your arms outstretched, with your hands pierced and your feet pierced. Sword went through your side. You died to take, Lord, the punishment that we deserve. Help each person here today to make a decision to trust in you, to believe on you. And when we believe on you, hallelujah, we'll have everything. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. 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 Praise God. God bless you, family. We're going to close out. I'm going to do something that's called Praise God. It, it's called an internment, but it's a commissioning. And we want to say this over Angela's remains. For as much then as it has pleased Almighty God to take out of this world our loved one, our deceased Angela Marshall, we commit her body to Mother Earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the resurrection in the last day and the life in the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose glorious second coming in majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in Jesus shall be changed and make like unto his own glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. If you can, please repeat these words after me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for now and forevermore. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor, and their works do follow them. Amen. I'm going to ask for the acknowledgments to be read by Lady Eileen Horde. And we want you to stay after we do our benediction. We have a meal prepared for you all. I believe we can accommodate each one of you. Stay with us and uh, have a meal with us. Amen. Acknowledgements. We are eternally grateful for your love, the memories that you've shared, and the comfort you've provided to us during this time as we come together to celebrate the life of our mother Thank you for all your love and support. From the sons of Angela D. Marshall, Anthony Marshall, Eric Harris, Terrence Scrivens, Michael Scrivens, and Amario Marshall. God bless you all. Amen. Would you stand with me, everyone? And we're going to go down into our lower dining room and have some food together. 
Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of Jesus, equip you to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Please come downstairs. We have a meal prepared for you. God bless you, family and friends today.